Um, I let them introduce themselves in a few uh, minutes, but welcome to all of you for joining um, and thank you for joining the call this evening. Um, as always, it's good to have you in the house. Um, just looking at a few notes, um, feel free to ask any questions you may have and pop them into the chat box where you introduce yourself. Um, and then, yeah, just lastly, a note to let you know that this call will be recorded, as you see. Um, that is for you to have access to the discussion afterwards and then also for our global community to have access to the conversation we have um, after we all dial off. Um, I'd like to introduce our first speaker. Um, we were supposed to have Daniel Block from um, CESO Global, um, but he wasn't able to make it. However, we have um, Kweku, who is um, Head of Partnerships and joins us from Ghana. Um, and uh, yeah, Daniel um, and the team, they have extensive knowledge in the blockchain and crypto space. Um, They've been involved with a number of blockchain initiatives. Uh, the founder also co-founded the Blockchain Education um, Network. So, uh, yeah, both speakers as well as John, um, they have um, a wealth of knowledge. So basically, uh, maximize your time with our speakers and ask them any questions you might have. Kweku, um, the floor is yours. Hello, hello. Thank you for that fine introduction. Uh, Hello to everyone here. Uh, it's my first time here. Uh, thank you all for having me. Uh, so my name is Kweku Essien. I'm uh, born and raised in Ghana, lived in Canada for the last 10 or so years, became an investor in this great company, Sesso, after meeting Daniel 10, 10, sorry, three years ago, sorry, in Ghana, in a workspace in Ghana, where we were talking about uh, really the land sector in, in Africa. He was working on a on a, on a business case at the time, working with the land registry uh, in Ghana. And that is where he really got sort of his, uh, his real thinking uh, around the problem, uh, problem statement in Ghana and what could be done there. Uh, fast forward to today, uh, we've tweaked the model a little bit in terms of how we look at it. Uh, we don't necessarily need to have government as a client, uh, which was the thinking before. Uh, now it's it's more so about creating a uh, land, a mortgage registry uh, through private transactions. Uh, and so I'll, I'll just run you through this deck, but really it's more of a conversation than anything else. Uh, the issue across the continent is, uh, is is pretty easy to understand when you look at the numbers there. Uh, the, the housing shortage is, is astronomical. Uh, and there's a huge opportunity for lenders as well in this space. Uh, uh, there, there are a lot of folks who have been looking to solve this issue, uh, but at the core of it, it's, it's been a property rights issue. Uh, if, if you don't understand who owns the title, uh, if you don't understand uh, who owns the land, it's hard to extract value. When it's hard to extract value, it's, it's hard to create more value. And so that's, that's been the issue therein. Um, what CESO tries to do really uh, is, is to create uh, an ecosystem, an ecosystem uh, uh, which avoids uh, 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 what has typically been the case. So typically, if you drive around the streets of Ghana or Nigeria, you see signs that say uh, this, uh, uh, really uh, graffiti on the walls that say, this land is not for sale. Uh, uh, that's, <laughs> that, that's a typical thing because there are people that go around selling properties that are not theirs. Uh, in, uh, this has also been a big case for the banks uh, because uh, in fact, in Ghana, a lot of banks uh, fell apart, were dissolved because of unsecured loans. Uh, you give out loans to, 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 to people you think have the, the title, have the ownership, uh, 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 but then you find out that it's hard to get collateral, the, the, the collateral on that line. One, one story a banker told us was that uh, uh, he went to collect on a property he went there and there are five other uh, bankers there from five different banks uh, who are all, who came, all came to collect on the same property. So it's been a big issue there. And so uh, really that's, that's what we're trying to solve here. And, and so this, this uh, uh, looking at the deck here, and I think everybody can see the deck, uh, um, it, it highlights really what we are trying to do here. And so we're, we're first starting with the low hanging fruit. Um, as I said, uh, Title ownership, ownership, title, uh, title ownership. These are, are big issues. Uh, you can go to court for five to ten years. Sometimes, till till someone dies, that's when these 
these things are resolved really uh, when it comes to uh, 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 ownership of land. Uh, and so uh, we wanted to step aside that at the beginning uh, and rather deal with the low hanging fruit, which is uh, estate developers, property developers. Now throughout uh, the big cities in, uh, Ghana, uh, in Ghana, Nigeria, uh, uh, and most of sort of middle Africa, uh, there is a burgeoning, I, I would say there's a market for, for, uh, uh, for property sales. It's a, it's a good, it's a good, good market. I, I wouldn't say it's, it's good in terms of the mortgage side, but in terms of the sales side, it, it, is, it is quite robust. And so we're looking to work with those estate developers because they have the right incentives to, uh, to make sure that the land there is unencumbered, make sure that they, they, the, 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 the property there they own and no one else owns. Uh, and so starting with them, we're, we're looking to build out uh, a core database of properties that, that are unencumbered. These properties are, are, are be the best for the banks. Now the banks are uh, like any other bank, but maybe even here more than anything, are more risk averse than anything else. They've been burnt many times before. As I said, in Ghana, uh, some of the banks there uh, were, were very much burnt and, uh, as well by giving out loans to, to people based on collateral, uh, uh, but not doing a due diligence. And the reason why they don't do due, due diligence, sorry, I, I should add, is that the Lands Commission, it can take months, years sometimes to attain whether or not someone owns the title on that land. And sometimes you can even get fake documents, sometimes you can get bribed. Uh, and so those, those issues uh, uh, mean that uh, uh, for uh, buyers and for bankers, sometimes you just move through with the transaction because you just want to get the business or because you just want to get the property. Uh, and so uh, moving through here, uh, we also have land service providers on the platform. Now, uh, the, 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 the reason for that is, is because, so we'll start with the trusted properties. These, these property developers will give us their title deeds and everything else, some of the other information as well that might be useful for, um, might be useful for the banks as well in terms of the valuation of the property, everything else to create, to, to, to be approved for a mortgage as well on the platform. But as well, a bank or a buyer, or even a property developer could utilize a land service provider to, to do extra due diligence on the property. And a lot of this is layered on the blockchain. So this is where the blockchain is much more useful. Obviously blockchain is only just a tool. Uh, uh, and at the end of the day, uh, garbage in, garbage out. And so what we, we're trying to, we start with the trusted property developers, but it can be that extra due diligence also on top of that. And so as, as we said, through private transactions, we're creating this database. So each time someone wants to query a property, sometimes somebody wants to access a mortgage, or, or just want to check on a property, all these private transactions are leading towards uh, 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 more trust on the platform. The banks, easy enough, they provide mortgages on, 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 these, on these properties and can pre-approve certain properties uh, 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 for mortgages. And so that'll also be on the platform there in, as well. And so all of these, creating these trusted, trusted transactions, this trusted data is then held in a de decentralized database as well, which can then be queried as well over time as well uh, 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 and utilized in, in other ways as well. Uh, for the banks, they love the platform and they love this idea because they can also upsell to, 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 to either the, the, the property developers or, or the buyers and as well, they can utilize this as well, this, this data set to create mortgage-backed securities as well. Uh, for us as CESO, uh, in terms of our, our revenue model, and this might, maybe, might be interesting to some folks, our revenue model is quite simple. We, we get a, a, a commission on, on transactions, on a sale from our platform, uh, on any some query or action with a uh, land service provider, and on any mortgage as well, uh, on it as well. And then with the banks as well, we'll have a license fee as, as well. Uh, there's, there's also obviously the, the whole notion of data analytics as well, which is where lo we're looking at uh, as well, but that's, that's as you build out the database therein as well. Uh, so I, I, the consensus algorithm here as well is quite useful, uh, as you may imagine from, from what I, I stated before about, about the, the issues with own, uh, ownership and, and titles and accessing this information from the last commission. Uh, uh, we, as we create this database, uh, the consensus algorithm will help us understand whether or not someone has gotten a mortgage from bank A and trying to get the, a, a mortgage from bank B on the same property, 
or if someone has sold a property and trying to sell it again as well. And so it's very useful in, in that sense. Um, I'll, I'll run through, I think I have 20 minutes. So I'll, I'll just run through some of this as well. This helps you understand our, our, our revenue model as well and how we're looking to, to, to build this out. Um, we've been quite, uh, 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 I'll say Daniel especially has been quite successful in, in Nigeria, uh, young, young American uh, uh, gentleman. Uh, he's gone into the beast in Nigeria and done quite well. Uh, I applaud him for that. And that, that's one of the reasons why I became an investor. Uh, and Nigeria, although uh, can be uh, uh, a bit of a beast, they are actually sometimes a bit more business savvy than other folks. As well, I'm from Ghana. I'm, I'm coming here to push the platform here, but they've been sort of much more appreciative of how this platform can, can improve uh, uh, their ecosystem there. And so we signed a partnership with the Nigerian Mortgage Refinancing Company, uh, which is essentially a parastatal organization, which was funded by uh, the World Bank and the Ministry of Finance, as well as uh, 20, 25 or so member banks, which include Access Bank and Stambic Bank. Uh, they essentially refinance mortgages for their members, uh, essentially making the mortgages much cheaper for their banks. And then hopefully as well, that, that's felt as well by their clients. And so the partnership is really, they, they tested our platform, they liked it. Partnership is to get their member banks on the platform, uh, uh, which include Trust Bond, Mortgage Bank, and Homebase, who just signed on. We, we've had good chats with the other banks. Uh, hopefully they'll all sign on uh, in the coming months as well. Uh, and uh, they're also gonna help us get government on board in some way. As I mentioned, the platform is not necessary. We don't necessarily require government involvement. Uh, land service providers go outside of the, our platform to go check on the titles and everything else. But it would be great to sync them with us as well and to be able to feed our data, our trusted data to their digitized platforms as well. Uh, as you may or may not know, uh, a lot of the banks, uh, I'm sorry, a lot of the uh, government uh, registries are looking to digitize, but they haven't been able to do that for many different reasons, corruption, just ineffective practices or processes or, or approaches. We're hoping to assist them in this sense by, 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 by pushing or funneling or feeding, whatever you want to call it. The data that we, coll we collect from, uh, and uh, collecting our database into there so that we can sync that and mirror that as well and make it much more easier for everybody else, much more efficient as well. For everybody else as well. Uh, as well, we've got some of the top uh, uh, property developers on our platform. Uh, Brains and Hammers uh, uh, are, are going to put a number of properties on. We can say that 10,000 properties. Uh, we've got Realty Point as well, Misa, family, Misa as well on the platform. Uh, as well, we've got uh, Family Homes Fund, which is a fund, uh, a limited liability company with the Ministry of Finance and the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority. Their aim is to build uh, affordable properties. Uh, and so they, they're joining our platform as well, and they, they will help provide liquidity uh, uh, to a lot, of, uh, a lot of the properties as well. And as well, as you may know, they, they'll also build out properties as well. Uh, for the service provider side of things as well, we've got some great partners in there as well, uh, uh, inc including some of the top law firms and surveys as well in, in, in the country so as to bolster our platform. Um, We've got other, other partners as well. Uh, PwC have joined us as well. They, are, they were working on, on a, a, a program with the government as well to, to bolster their, actually their government registries. And so we're working in concert with them. Interest switches to help us really with the payment side of things. And we're, we're also working with other some developmental organizations as well. Uh, the UK Development Fund, uh, German Development Fund as well. Uh, I should add that the, the company is a UK domicile company. Uh, and we do have our, our, our branch in Nigeria and I'm building out the branch in Ghana. Uh, this, this just gives you a sense of opportunity, I guess, what is going on now and the opportunity as well moving forward. Uh, as you can see, the market size, it's, it's not that high, especially compared to GDP. Uh, we're hoping to sort of uh, uh, basically ca uh, catalyze this, uh, uh, make it five times what it is as well. Uh, because the whole goal, the whole point I, I guess, and I, I always think about um, Adam Smith when he talks when he talked about property rights as well. Uh, at the end of the day, without property rights, uh, uh, without that layer, that foundation, it's very hard to extract value. It's very hard to create uh, 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 create avenues for people to 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 attain loans, which they can either use to 
pay out properties over time or to or or basically to finance a project or a business uh, and so we're hoping that this this helps catalyze that whole thing as well our team uh, uh, Daniel Block and Philip Jarman, who are our C CEO and CEO, they founded the company as well. Uh, we have Dr. Maria Vigiliotti as well, who's our CTO, uh, who's helped sort of coalesce and, and give us some of the structures when it comes to the technology side of things. Uh, our, a lot of our tech team is based out in Ghana. Uh, four of them are, so four of them are based out in Ghana with uh, our blockchain engineer, Akinyemi, uh, 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 based out in Nigeria. So I'm here in Ghana. I, I've uh, I've been here for a month or so, uh, uh, back home. Happy to be back uh, to build out this exciting venture. Uh, it's uh, I've only had positive discussions so far. Uh, it's been quite exciting, uh, and uh, we've got some banks and some property developers who are uh, happy to join the platform as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been good. And so I think I'll end it there. I think uh, it's right on the mark with 20 minutes or so. Or I think I have two minutes or so, but right on the mark, I'll, I'll leave it there and then uh, I'll wait for some questions. Please don't make the questions too hard for me, but I'll, I'll, wait, I'll wait for the questions after. Thank you all. Thanks, Kweku, that was really insightful. Um, we have some questions uh, that I will leave for the Q&A session. Um, so I'll hand over to John after you share in your screen share. Okay, no problem. But thank you, that was a brilliant presentation. Thank you for joining. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. John. John. Cheers. Cheers. Um, we've got John Hardy um, from Autogen Protocol who will be touching on decentralized marketplaces. And I, for one, I'm so excited um, to learn a little bit more about the protocol and some of the things they've been up to. Um, so, John, over to you. All right. Thank you. One second here. Let me get my screen share going. I think I may have forgotten to ask, but if you're not presenting, oh, um, maybe that's why I can't. Twenty-nine of us aren't. Um, please put your your uh, mic on mute. It's going to help a lot. Thanks. All right, can you guys see my screen? We can. Okay, thank you very much. Um, excited to be here and tell you guys a little bit about what we are up to at Origin. And if anything is unclear or you can't hear me or something, just let me know. Um, but at Origin, we are building a platform built on top of the Ethereum blockchain for building decentralized marketplaces. And I will go into what that means and why it matters very shortly here. Um, but just to give a little bit of context, about 25 years ago, the way people transacted goods and services was completely changed by a couple of internet companies, Craigslist and eBay. And instead of purchasing goods and services from companies, these platforms allowed them to buy them from other individuals. And since then, we've seen tons and tons of these marketplaces pop up. More recently, Uber and Airbnb in the sharing economies. And many times these are either claimed to be or are touted as peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, but they're actually not peer-to-peer -peer at all. There was a giant company sitting in the middle, collecting all of the user's data and using that data to monetize. So um, one thing that our founders set out to do when uh, trying to land on exactly what made the most sense to work on um, when it came to the blockchain was figuring out what's going to be an idea that can have a substantial effect on the 
actual globe, you know, on a global scale, the entire world. So uh, cutting out the middleman has always been something that everybody in blockchain has, has always talked about, whether it's the anarchists or Goldman Sachs or technologists, they usually point to cutting out the middleman as a really good use case. And so we set out to turn these so-called peer-to-peer marketplaces into actual peer-to-peer marketplaces using the blockchain. And so this is our mission to enable true peer-to-peer commerce. Um, and I will go into a little bit about why we're doing this and some of the problems we're solving, but just to very quickly give everybody an idea of what we're building and how we're building it. Um, we, we can see here, this is kind of the stack that we're, that we're approaching the problem with. So at the very bottom, we have a set of open source protocols. And these are a set of standards that are built on top of the Ethereum blockchain. And uh, for anybody who is not up to speed, the Ethereum blockchain allows not only money to be sent over uh, between two parties without uh, a third party to confirm and um, validate the transaction, but on the Ethereum blockchain, you can run all sorts of programs and uh, logic on top of these transactions. So when we set out to enable true peer-to-peer -peer commerce, we were really excited about the functionality of smart contracts within the Ethereum blockchain and how they could be used to um, allow a buyer and a seller to connect and transact with each other without you know, needing to rely on a third party to establish trust. So we built a set of smart contracts to represent various different things on the blockchain that are necessary for these marketplaces. Uh, for example, identity is very crucial to a marketplace. If you can solve identity, it becomes much easier to solve things like reputation and dispute resolution. So uh, that was one of the first smart contracts that we created. And then of course, just basic contracts around things like listings. Um, and then we have a specific focus on sharing economies. So uh, we made sure that our smart contracts can support things like the fractional usage of assets so that you can rent out you know, a home for one night or one week. Um, now that we had built this set of smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain, we wanted to make it very easy for people to interact with these smart contracts. So the first idea was to create a, a JavaScript library because not a lot of developers know Solidity, which is the programming language for the Ethereum blockchain. Not many of them know how to create a safe, secure smart contract but most of them know JavaScript. So we figured we could get it into the hands of more developers by abstracting away the complexities of the blockchain and making it very easy for developers to use JavaScript to create a true peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. More recently, however, um, ahead of launching the JavaScript library, we actually launched a no-code marketplace creator where you can just fill out a form and create one of these marketplaces marketplaces um, that is based on our infrastructure. And the idea here, whether you're using the developer library or marketplace creator, is to not have to rebuild all of the things that are common to all marketplaces like identity, escrow, etc. And instead be able to focus on what's core and specific to your marketplace like acquiring users, onboarding users, um, and making your users successful. So uh, the last thing is that on the very top of all of this, we built some dApps. Uh, the first app we built, uh, I'll show a little bit uh, later in the presentation and give you guys an opportunity to interact with it. Uh, but it is a basically just a very simple marketplace for buyers and sellers. It's available, I'll just skip ahead really quickly to, uh, it's available at dapp.org and protocol.com. Uh, and you can see all sorts of listings from all different marketplaces uh, that are building on our infrastructure, including Pure Art and Crypto Merch, which I'll cover in a second here. Um, so everything we've done is 100% open source. I'll provide links at the end, but we encourage everybody to check out what we've built, leave feedback, communicate, collaborate, 
uh, fork it, do whatever you'd like to do. So what, what are we doing this for? Why are, why are we doing this? Uh, there's four major reasons that we think this is really important. And two are financial incentives and two are more about access. The first is very straightforward. It's to lower fees. These marketplaces typically have transaction fees in the neighborhood of 20 to 30%, sometimes much higher in extreme cases. And the transaction fees will go with it and this can put money back into the pockets of the buyers and the sellers. The second is to redistribute value more fairly throughout the platform. So we like to ask ourselves, what is the first Uber driver doing today? Probably still driving for Uber and probably making less money than they were day one. So the benefit of these cryptocurrencies is that they can be used to distribute value more fairly and incentivize early users of the network to help grow the network in a healthy manner. Um, so while all of the investors and early employees and founders of Ubers will make millions of dollars in the IPO, you know, that first driver isn't going to benefit from that upside. We want to give back to the early users and allow them to benefit from the growth of the network as well. And we think cryptocurrency is a very good tool in it being able to do that. The third is to promote free and open commerce. A lot of these online marketplaces are banned or heavily regulated in cities throughout the world. San Francisco removed 50% of Airbnb's listings in the city uh, in one day uh, because of a law change. And whether or not you agree with the legal reasons behind this, the, the fact that Airbnb represents a single point of failure uh, is pretty scary. Um, and so, we don't think that this regulation should be so easily done on the technology layer. And that's why we're excited about uh, the immutability of the blockchain and um, what it can do to give access to these online marketplaces in places that is banned, regulated, or even maybe not profitable enough for somebody like Airbnb to come in. Um, so this leads into the fourth, which is to serve the unbanked. There's billions of people uh, include, you know, many of which are in Africa where Quake is working hard on um, that don't have access to these online marketplaces simply because they don't have a credit card or a bank account. Um, but they do have access to cheap Android smartphones, many of which will have cryptocurrency wallets in the future. So we think that a lot of their first experiences with online marketplaces will be powered by the blockchain and cryptocurrencies. So this is just a quick look at what the marketplace creator looks like. Um, again, it doesn't require any code and uh, we can host it or you can set it up on your own custom domain. You can customize your branding, colors, that sort of stuff, your logo. Um, for anything highly customizable, the, the better fit will be our upcoming JavaScript library, which should be released in the next couple of months. Um, and we're also experimenting ways with using our token to incentivize marketplace operators. So because we're very much about this 0% transaction fee world um, where buyers and sellers can directly transact with each other without fees, we want to give marketplace operators an opportunity to earn commissions using our origin token. So just one of many ways we're ex uh, experimenting with uh, using that token to spur growth and health of the network. All right, so we talked a little bit about the first marketplace we launched, which is at dap.originprotocol.com. We've also launched two in-house marketplaces. Pure Art is very much what it sounds like. It is an art marketplace. It contains both crypto and non-crypto art. And uh, it is, I think there's, uh, there's well over 100 listings and something like 20 artists or so on there. Um, and then we also have crypto merch, which is, a marketplace for crypto projects to list their t-shirts, swag, merch, et cetera. Both of these are, uh, were built on the marketplace creator and both of these are 0% transaction fees. Um, so, uh, well, all three of these are 0% transaction fees. So all of the money that, or all the ETH that you send to the seller uh, goes to the seller outside of, of course, any gas costs that you have to pay to the Ethereum network. Um, 
And we're also going to very quickly at the end of this presentation, give some instructions on how you can actually use one of these marketplaces. Uh, and we're going to even provide you with a little bit of ETH to buy a very discounted shirt if you're interested in doing that. So here we go. If you guys have never used a decentralized application, um, I will do my best to walk you through it uh, with a couple of very high level slides and then just me talking. Um, but it's a good uh, opportunity to, to interact with one of these applications, see what it's all about, see how much work we still need to do to get this in the hands of uh, the mass consumer audience. Um, but you can get a, basically a free shirt out of it if you're interested. So first step, make sure you're connected to Wi-Fi or internet connection. I assume you have that since you're listening to me. Um, the next thing you'll need to do is you'll need to download a wallet. So your wallet is what will contain your uh, cryptocurrencies. And typically we would recommend either using something like Coinbase wallet, which you can download on your phone, which everybody usually has on them. Or if you're at com your computer, there is a browser extension available for either Chrome or Firefox called MetaMask, M-E-T-A-M-A-S-K. Uh, and you can also use this to um, store your cryptocurrency and more importantly, interact with the blockchain. So in order to transact with these dApps, um, you have to basically sign transactions and send ETH. Um, the third step here is to write down your recovery phrase. So uh, the important, one of the important pieces of the puzzle here is that if you lose your password or, or anything like that, nobody can give you your money back. Nobody can give you your ETH back. That's the, uh, the, the bug and the feature, I guess you could say, of not having a trusted third party. So be very careful about any money you put into these wallets and make sure you know how to back it up and recover it if something happens. All right, uh, so number four, you need to get some ETH. In order to tr interact with the Ethereum blockchain, there's something called gas that has to be paid. Uh, this gas is a fee that is paid to the miners which secure the blockchain. Um, we've done a lot on our end to make this as cheap as possible and we will continue to do work to make it as cheap as possible to interact with the blockchain. Um, so to, to set up your profile, for example, which you'll need to do to get some ETH out of our faucet that we've set up, um, there'll be, you know, it costs like a penny worth of, of ETH that you'll need to um, spend. So in order to get some of that ETH, if you don't wanna go through the, the process of actually purchasing it, we can give you a very small amount if you go to ogn.dev slash Linum Labs. It's only gonna be available for another 30 minutes or so, but we wanted to give you guys a chance to check this out and not give you too many excuses. So you go to this uh, short link here, you input your address, your wallet address, which you get from the wallet that you downloaded. And you also will have to complete a phone attestation in order to, uh, to receive your ETH. So I'll explain what that means in a second here. But you go to this, you put in your wallet address, we'll give you some ETH, then you complete your profile. And um, part of that will be confirming your phone number, we'll send you a text, you punch in a code, and then we will tie your Ethereum wallet address to that phone number. Um, the, just full disclosure, the phone number is not published to the blockchain or anything like that. We're just saying that you have confirmed a phone number. Um, and once you've done all that, if you go to cryptomerch.io, there is going to be a very, very cheap shirt on there. Um, it's gonna be like 0.001 ETH or something like that. It'll be enough, uh, it'll be an amount that you will have covered by the ETH that we gave you from the faucet. Um, and this will allow you to go through the entire process of setting up your profile, uh, submitting an offer, going through the purchase, leaving a review, uh, and you'll get a really nice high quality origin t-shirt out of it um, that will work with you to send to your address. Um, so again, it's only available for another 30 minutes or so, but it's a really cool way to experience buying one of these uh, shirts. The shirt will be up there indefinitely, but uh, the actual free ETH through this faucet will only be available for another 30 minutes or so. Um, but that's it as far as the high level of what we're up to. You may have a ton of questions, which I'm happy to answer during the Q&A, but if you want to learn more about Origin, this is where I would start. 
feel free to email me directly at john at originprotocol.com. Um, join our Discord. We do all of our communication and collaboration out in the open. And we even do a weekly public engineering call where uh, you can meet our engineers, ask them questions directly, see what we're up to, uh, and introduce yourself. Um, it looks like there's some questions getting asked. I'll maybe save these for the Q&A, Nicole. Um, yeah, I'll facilitate it, um, John. So um, you're, you're, you're okay. <laughs> Got it. Okay, I mean, that's pretty much it. Come join the conversation. We, we really like people to ask hard questions. Um, our last five engineering hires all started out by being open source contributors. Just they found our project, started contributing very small amounts of code. Then we hired them as contractors. Now they're full time and, and some of them moved here to San Francisco. So um, we love when people contribute in even very small ways. Our DAP and our website are translated in over 20 languages, all because of our community. Um, so we love getting help from the community and we're always looking ways to give back uh, to anybody that's willing to help us out and, and collaborate. So let me know if you have any questions during the Q&A or feel free to email me anytime as well. Thanks for the such a um, and very insightful presentation, John. Um, was thoroughly enjoyed on my side. I'm sure um, everyone um, learned something new or found it insightful. Before I start reading out the questions again, um, this call is really to introduce our community members who aren't so well endowed with um, blockchain and all of the terms involved with it. Um, thank. Thanks for popping your contact details, um, Quaco. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions around comprehension with the first um, presentation um, from uh, CESO Global, um, and you want to ask them now before I read out of the question, um, do that um, as well for John. Okay, I'm taking the silence as a no. <laughs> so Are there any questions on the chat here? Should we answer these? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm. We will get to them in a second. So, first question is from Gino for Queco. Um, he says, where is the deeds office in all of this? Does your blockchain replace the conventional deeds office? That one's for you, Queco. Hey, perfect. Yeah, so uh, I'll say this. No, it does not. So, uh, there's, a, there's something called the MERS, the Mortgage Electronification Registration System in the United States. Uh, I, I would ask you all to Google it if you want. It was created in the 80s. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it says categorically that they do not, we, they are not here to take over from the government, uh, but rather to complement it. And that's exactly what we want to do here. Uh, so what I said was there's a land service provider there that will need to go do due, due, due diligence. They would need to go to the Lands Commission to do that due diligence. Uh, uh, as well, the property developers would have to go get their titles and deeds from the Lands Commission. But what we are saying is that once we have that copy, that first copy, and then we have some due diligence layered on it, as you said, through private transactions, you then gain more trust on, say, once one property there as well, because the due diligence has been done on that property. And so over time, uh, uh, you don't actually need the, la the Lands Commission per se, but they are there. We do have to complement with them and feed their digital registries so that there's just a link there between the two uh, instead of a land service provider going all the way to the Lands Commission to do the job for you. But because of the dynamics on the ground and because of sometimes uh, uh, the lack of inefficiency with, with the Lands Commission and how, how they work, uh, I think we'll have to sort of prove out our model before the they get too close with us. But in Nigeria, as I said, we are working with the NMRC and their, their role is to help us get to government. And same here as well, I've, I've had people from government who are keen to join us as well and, and help us uh, and help us help them really more than anything else. Thanks, Kweku. And then a second question from Kent. Um, he asks, are you primarily targeting properties um, or title deeds in your solution or are the plans to include mining and other prospecting cadastres? If yes, are you storing Polygon data on the blockchain? Okay, okay. Uh, so I'll say this. Uh, we, we are, we're looking at uh, um, 
first case scenario is to get the low hanging fruit. Low hanging fruit is, is are the property developers. Um, obviously, as, as a land registry, as a land and mortgage registry, the goal is to have as much property uh, on the platform as possible. Uh, but we're focusing on this niche first in terms of the, the mortgage side of things before uh, we move towards any type of other other data. Because there, there's, there's, a, there's a land developers, then even in, in, in parts of, in Ghana here as well, lots of the land is owned by families and lots of the land are owned by chiefs or, 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 or royal families as well. And so on, on that front, it, it's, it's best to start with this. Uh, uh, with this cadre of, of information and then move from there. I hope that answers your question. Thanks, Weku. Ken, does that answer your question? Do you have any follow-up questions from Leon? Uh, um, it does answer my question. Um, I was just wondering because um, there are a lot of digital implement, well, digital systems, not on the blockchain currently, um, that are basically managing uh, land cadastres primarily for prospecting. Um, however, they do contain all the, the land registry information of title deeds as well. So um, I was just wondering if you have looked at that possibly. And uh, just an add on to that, I'm not sure if you are familiar with Trimble or Flexi Cadaster, but they do a lot of work. They are the primary ones that do work in um, providing online portals for cadaster applications uh, or prospecting applications on cadasters. So um, if you haven't um, spoken to them, it might be a good avenue. Um, they, they're like the, the head honchos across the world that deal with cadaster systems, um, storing, these, uh, storing all this data. It is stored on, you know, just plain servers. But um, I've always thought, you know, since last year with regards to blockchain and the evolution, this is quite a big, um, big avenue that blockchain can alleviate. But yeah, that, that does answer my question. Thank you. I agree with you. Uh, can you send, can you type the name of those companies for me? I have not heard it. Thank you. Sure, I'll send them through. Thank you. Thanks, Kent. And then a question from Manj to Kweko as well. Um, she asks, who funds the platform? Sure. Uh, so, uh, uh, well, we're funding the platform now in terms of building out uh, the platform, but uh, in terms of the business model, which may be what uh, uh, you're talking about, it, it's essentially uh, essentially the pay. Uh, we have uh, the banks who will uh, pay a licensing fee uh, to utilize the platform, uh, and then we have uh, uh, them as well paying a commission as well on on the mortgages. Uh, as well, uh, we also have. Uh, uh, um, the property developers who we are not charging now, we want them all to get on the platform. And for them, it's easy enough because it's an advertising platform for them as well. Uh, and they always like that. And, but we're taking up a, 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 a commission on the sale on that front. And then also the service providers therein as well uh, will be taking a commission when someone uses a lawyer or surveyor or, or value or any, any of those, those folks. As well, I believe there are other, uh, as we build out this database, uh, the quer querying aspect will also be Having you license, and that's that's also a, a, a portion that will be good as well for us. Oh, that's good. Thank you, Kweku. Manj, does that answer your question? Do you have any follow ups? Okay, you can just pop it into the chat if you do. Um, and then another one from Gino for Kweku What blockchain are you using? Yeah, so uh, it, I, it's Ethereum and Hyperledger. Uh, uh, it's it's a private blockchain for now. That that's what we're using because of the conservative nature of the banks. Uh, but uh, uh, but uh, we we uh, we are looking at uh, sort of tokenizing this and making it much more public, just to make it much more widely used uh, or utilized, and also to build out the data and the platform. But for now, uh, this is a very conservative nature of the banks. Uh, it, it's, it's a hyperledger, which is a, a platform that is uh, sort of looked, looked uh, 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 which is looked positively upon by banks and Ethereum for the smart contracts. Cool, thank you. Um, yeah, and then for John, um, 
we've got another question from Gino and he asks, is it possible to eliminate, eliminate custom handling fees across country borders on a peer-to-peer -peer blockchain network? Probably not. I, I don't, that's probably not uh, exactly the territory that we're getting into when it comes to the logistics of it. And this probably falls along the lines of something the marketplace operators will handle um, because each market's going to be very different um, and each marketplace will be very different. So, you know, we will probably the plot oh john i think your sound is a little bit um your connection is a little bit unstable that so element of it i'm um, happy to do that oh sorry am i back now you are back okay long story short probably not something we'll deal with directly marketplace operators will probably have to deal with that but we can support them on the platform side Thanks, John. And then another one from Kent. Um, is an auction marketplace available on the Autogen protocol? Um, it would be interesting and it'd be an interesting implementation of a bonding curve um, would allow control of a bid sentiment. Uh, right now, no. Our smart contracts are relatively simple in the sense that it's an offer and then the offer is accepted or rejected. Um, we certainly could add smart contracts uh, that support an auction mechanism or one of many different, um, you know, ways to do it. And being middleware, this is an advantage we have. We can add smart contracts. We could even, in theory, support other blockchains if it made sense down the road for us. Mm -hmm. Kane, does that answer your question? I see a thumbs up. Thank you. Um, and then Graham Nelson um, said that it looks like the t-shirts are sold out, John. And that's a sad face added to it. Give the people what they want. Is there more t-shirts available? <laughs> I'm asking for myself too. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, no, no, hold on. There shouldn't be. Let me, let me provide the correct link. There's probably other shirts that are sold out. Uh, okay. Hold on a sec. I'll get them for you. Cool. I'm going to continue with the um, questions though. Um, and then um, Kent asks, how are you managing dialogues between parties in a sale? Any work done with Whisper? That one's for you, John. I'm sorry, what was it again? What was the question? Let me... Sorry, I know you're searching and listening at the same time. How oh. are you managing dialogues between parties in a sale? Yes. Um, any work done with Whisper? Uh, we did not use Whisper. We built a our own chat system that we initially used OrbitDB and IPFS. Um, we actually moved away from OrbitDB. I would go to our medium, uh, medium.com slash origin protocol. We just put out a post about our most recent messaging update. Um, but it's all, again, open source code. Check out the code, fork it, look at it. For us, it's important that it's um, encrypted, but auditable by a third party uh, in the event that buyer and seller want arbitration. Um, so it has to be um, pretty unique in that, in that way. But uh, check out what we've built. And again, we wrote a, a blog post about why we've made the decisions we've made. Awesome, thanks, John. Yep, and I also posted a link to the to the shirt that should be available. Amazing, <laughs> thank you. Um, and then another question for Kweku, still on the call. Um, Kweku, how do you deal with discrepancies on title information? As an example, plot size drifting with that on the registry, and you mentioned that data from CESO could be fed into the government's registries. How would they be standardized um, in the African region? So that's a loaded question. Um, the uh, last yeah. one in the chat box, so you can follow on there as well. Okay, perfect. Uh, so good, good question. So, uh, uh, so this question is exactly why we deal with uh, unencumbered land. Um, uh, so it's exactly why we, we, we like to deal with the uh, low-hanging fruit, the estate developers, because they would, more than anything else, 
get the surveyors uh, to sort of plot their land accurately, to make sure that they have the title on the land, to make sure that they have all the right information that a, a buyer, a credible buyer or a bank would need to sort of uh, get uh, to uh, action a transaction on. Um, on the platform, you will be able to query on properties that are not, uh, uh, it's, it's something that we're building up, haven't fully built up, but you will be able to query on, on properties that are not on, on, that are not provided by estate developers. Uh, but essentially, as you go through that process, a, a lawyer can easily, a lawyer can, a, a lawyer, lawyers in Ghana, especially, I'll give you an example, uh, will not touch land where they, they can't uh, get the uh, most accurate information from. And so that, in a sense, gives you a sense of land to stay away from, right? Uh, uh, and so there's like green lit land and then land that is like red, stop, don't touch it. Uh, and, and essentially that can only be solved in the courts. Uh, that is where government has to be involved because uh, I, uh, I, with those properties, you have the, the, the only one who can arbitrate and make sure that that, that information is accurate is, is through uh, the government. And so that's where the land service providers there are important because in essence, that information will be fed to us that, hey, we couldn't get the title on this land. And so that plot of land essentially will have uh, 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 like something notifying you to stay away from it, right? And so that in essence, you are still building a registry here uh, and a registry that helps people who are not from there, people who are not in the country, people who are looking for property to understand what land is proper and what land is not. Um, on the second question, in terms of standardization, so if it follows in that same sense, we are uh, through our private transactions, we are feeding information to our, to, to our database that over time is going to make it much more accurate uh, as well. And so that, that in a sense creates a certain standard with what we've created that the governments don't have. Uh, and so we would, we, and so although it's being fed in a way from them, we are creating a standard with our platform that can, that can then be fed into their uh, databases. Now, mind you, uh, it's, it's, it's important to understand that they don't have, most of them don't have any digital databases. They have a platform with no real information in it. And so we would be feeding, that in, feeding them with that information uh, with our database, right? I don't know if anyone has any more questions. Thanks, Kwe. Cool. And then just to come quickly, that answers your question. You have, if you have any last comments on that, just to unmute and signal. No? Okay. Um, dun -dun 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 -dun. We've got a note from John to say if you haven't completed your profile um, with a phone, um, the Linum, the, uh, saying Linum Labs invite code won't work. We recently added this requirement to fight bad actors. Um, sorry for bad messaging. We'll work on updating this. And then thanks, Graham, um, for the message. Um, he says that the shirt link worked. Hope you're happy with your merch. And then Gino um, has a question for John. Um, just quickly, do you think there will be a crypto debit or credit card on marketplaces um, platform in the space you are predating? That one's for you, John. Okay, thanks, Gino, for all the great questions. Um, so just to, to talk about kind of currencies in general, today we support only ETH, uh, which is native to Ethereum. We will be announcing support for a stable coin soon, which we think is very important to these marketplaces. Um, so a stable coin is pegged to fiat. In our case, it'll be the US dollar. And we also will support other tokens in the future. Longer term, we would love to support a fiat on-ramp where you can use a credit card or bank account or something uh, to purchase uh, something off of a marketplace but there's quite a bit of work that's still being figured out there. Um, so we're working on it and we want to support as many currencies as possible. Thanks, John. Um, do you know, if you have any other comments, you can just add them down as well or unmute your, unmute your mic. 
that comes to the end of the call. I mean, if there aren't any other questions, um, we're going to log off, but from my side and on behalf of Linum, thank you to both speakers um, for participating, participating in this month's um, community call. We really appreciate it. And then for everybody who joined, um, yeah, we hope you enjoyed it and found it super exciting. We will upload this recording um, onto YouTube and make it available to you. And if anybody um, hasn't seen um, any of our like tweets or um, posts on um, social media, we have a really exciting um, hackathon hitting the shores on over the weekend of the 19th and 21st um, in collaboration with ETH Global. Um, we'll be hosting ETH Cape Town. Um, if you're not on our meta platforms, um, we have <laughs> some excitement there. We've got some um, notes on there. Um, and yeah, just um, pop me a message on Twitter, LinkedIn. I'm really happy to have you on as volunteers, mentors, or if there are any workshops or just anything with regards to the hackathon, it's going to be amazing. We have some really cool judges, including um, Vitalik, which is going to be amazing for um, uh, to have him in Cape Town. So yeah, any questions you may have, get in touch. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Thank you, Thanks, everyone. Guys. Thanks, guys.